just to let you know before the video, you have until September the 10th to enter the Mecha Gaikotsu Discord build off. That's this one right here, that is for Patreon and channel members. And now I'm finally announcing how to win the Master Grade Bar Battles and Option Set. And that's pretty simple, just drop a comment down there on this video about what got you into Gunpla and what it means to you. Then you'll be automatically entered and I'll announce the winner in two weeks. Hey, what is up everyone? Today I'm taking a look at this right here, the Master Grade Eclipse Gundam. I don't want to kind of jump the gun too much right now, but this is based on the Master Grade Freedom 2.0 to a certain degree, which was one of my all-time favorite Master Grades. And the design of this is so clean, it looks phenomenal. This is one of the nicest looking Master Grades I've seen in quite some time. It also has a transformation, which I haven't tried yet, so I'm excited to see what that's like. But yeah, this thing is blowing my mind so far. Anyways, always this video right here. It would not have been possible without those absolutely awesome people over at Hobby League Japan. So if you're looking for some Gunpla or this kit for yourself, I will drop a link down there in the description now. Let's get into it. So first off, a little bit on the commentary of the build. I absolutely adored this build. It's unique and familiar at the same time and everything works perfectly. This kit does share a couple of runners with the Master Grade Freedom 2.0, but it doesn't really share that many parts, mainly just some aspects of the limbs and the joints. So a lot of the sections in the upper leg, a lot of the sections of the internal sections of the arms, these are all shared with the Freedom 2.0, which does mean that Swapping some aspects like the arms, the legs, the waist unit, etc. is all, well, doable with the Freedom 2.0 and I guess the Freedom 2.0 based kits, including the Justice. So that makes it a very kit bashable kit. Besides that though, this is completely unique. The legs are ridiculous. These have some transforming elements that are really fun to build. Once again, I have not transformed it just yet, so I'm not sure how that works out. The shoulders, the feet, the torso, everything is so unique to build. The head actually builds into the torso during the build, so that does mean you can't really pop the head on and off per se. And honestly, the entire thing is very unique, and I highly recommend it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. So now jumping into the aesthetics and this thing blows me away. It seems to have borrowed so many different visual aspects of so many different Gundam mobile suits. Of course one that a lot of people tend to compare this to is the Kusi Gundam or the Penelope because of the large triangular shoulders and in general the predominantly white color scheme. It definitely has that vibe. But we also have some real Gundam X looking vibes around the face area. And of course there are a lot of design elements that resemble future GPX cyber formula. And apparently the mobile armor or flight form of this particular mobile suit is based on those particular cars. When you build a mobile suit it does give you a lot of different perspectives on the actual design elements that make it up. At first I thought this was over the top and crazy, which it is. And I thought those tiny tiny little feet looked a little bit on the ridiculous side, which they kind of do. But I love this before I built it and I love it even more afterwards. The color scheme to me is so perfect. The layout of the white versus the blue and the dark almost black really is just all weighted perfectly. It still has that Gundam vibe while looking almost classy. On top of that we've got crazy panel lines everywhere that are just the perfect amount of, well, being there that it isn't too busy but looks still very technical. And when it comes to the included stickers, what we've got in here is this big old sheet of sticker style decals. Now I've only used two of these, those are the ones up on the shoulders, because I'm not the biggest fan of sticker style decals, they stand out a little bit, but this is what they all look like. On top of that we do have some foil stickers, I've used the ones up on the head cameras, but I did not use the ones on the eyes because this is a master grade kit that has color separated eyes. Now this is rare. So those eyes are actually made out of a very bright, eye-catching, clear green plastic. However, up on the head where I've got those stickers, there is no clear parts. So it's a bit of a win-lose situation. We've got some great eyes, but the head cameras are not color accurate. Also, I will mention right here, this is a mobile suit that has a fairly extreme transformation, but to look at it, it doesn't look like an obviously transforming mobile suit, which is cool. Also, I don't usually mention the cockpit at this 
particular point in the videos, but it is so unique. The way it opens up from the top, the pilot sitting in there like a race car, is such a unique aspect, I had to mention it early. So I asked you guys in a community post what you wanted to see in this video, so I'm gonna throw some of the answers to you guys' questions intermittently through the video. So the first one and the main one that's been asked the most is to get a fashion show going of this kit with the striker packs of other master grade kits as well as a comparison with those particular mobile suits, so let's get right into that. So we're going to be starting off with the Strike Gundam and its Striker Pack, mainly because the main adapter on the back of the Eclipse Gundam is a Striker Pack attachment. Besides that, we do need to do a little bit of parts changing out, so this is the easiest one. So right off the bat, you can see the Eclipse Gundam is a tall Gundam, quite a bit taller than the Strike. So attaching this on is simple and seamless. You just pull up a flap just above the Striker Pack attachment point and plug it in. Simple as, and it looks fantastic. I'm guessing it's because this color scheme right here is somewhat of a variation of the Ale Strike Gundam or the Strike Gundam in general. So this works really well. So far, so good. Continuing on with the X-Frame Master Grades, there it is side by side with the Buster Gundam. So the Buster's backpack is just a backpack, it's not a Striker Pack, so it cannot attach. It just doesn't go in far enough. Next one. There it is side by side with the Blitz and the Jewel. These, well, their backpacks are just backpacks again, not Striker Packs, so moving along. So next up another Striker Pack and that is with the Master Grade Lucas's Strike Gundam. Now this is one of the oldest seed kits I have, so this IWSP pack has seen quite a bit of a beating. As for attaching this, I would say this is not a 100% compatible pack. It really clashes with the head in a lot of different ways, that you can only have it in one position and still the top of the head armor is hovering a little bit. Besides that though, it does tend to fit, it just restricts the head completely. Next one! Moving on to some strays, here is the Astray Blue Frame D. So what we've got with this kit is just a color swap of the Ale Striker pack of the Strike Remaster we saw already, but I'm not gonna begrudge you the spin, it fits, it fits perfect, and that is what it looks like. The use of white instead of red on this really kind of makes it suit this predominantly white kit. Looks good. Next one. Next up is the Master Grade Astray Noir. As far as I know, this is the exact same Striker pack you get with the Strike Noir, in case you're wondering. I'm not sure, <laughs> I think it is. Once again, this attaches on seamlessly, no issues whatsoever, and to me, so far, physically, this one looks the best. The big, sharp angles, the wingspan, just really suits the look of this particular mobile suit. Of course, the color is not right, but if it was painted up to match it, this looks stellar. Next one. Next up there it is side by side with a red frame. This one is the one with the flight unit, so that is Premium Bandai. So I will mention this is the first non-compatible backpack we've seen so far. This is the standard square peg that goes into the Astray's backs, which would be the same as the whole setup for the red frame Kai's tactical arm. So none of that stuff will fit. Next up then we've got the Premium Bandai Testament Gundam, and as the name suggests, the Divine Striker Pack is indeed a Striker Pack, so that means it slots into that Striker Pack slot seamlessly. This fits on perfect, nothing gets in the way, it can do everything you need it to do, and it looks fantastic. So once again, a complete win right here. Next one. So as of right now, I'll mention I do not have the Otori or the Lightning Striker Packs, so I cannot use these in this video and check if they work out, but... It is time to move on to the one that I've been kind of dreading the most. That, of course, is the Perfect Strike Whole Ensemble. So attaching this on is actually much easier than I had anticipated. I thought it'd be a bit of a nightmare, but it's not. This is a solid, awesome kit. So you need to add two extra attachment parts, some equipment for up on the shoulders, which allows the shoulder aspects of the sword and the launcher striker to actually attach up there. So everything attaches on perfectly. It looks Awesome, I will mention these are out of the P-Bandai Perfect Strike Gundam kit, so they are kind of pearlescent looking. And I'll also mention one additional aspect. This kit isn't as staunch in the midsection as the Strike Remaster is, so if you tilt it backwards like this, it cannot support the weight of all that going on around back. At least out of box, it can't. If you tighten it up, no problem. So now we're moving away from Striker Packs and onto some Silhouette Packs. So in order to do this, you actually need to swap out some sections on the back. That is these two little flat segments. You just replace those with these ones with the four Silhouette Pack, or should I say just regular Silhouette Pack attachment points. 
So when it comes to the standard three impulses, this is the only one I have, which is the P Bandai Blast Impulse Gundam. So attaching this onto the Eclipse Gundam is pretty similar to what we were doing at the Striker Packs. Instead, it's to those two holes in the back instead. Now, this is a tight fit compared to the Striker Packs, so be careful. It does fit in fine. That's what it looks like attached. And there is the spin. Everything fits where it needs to, does what it needs to do. I'm just curious about how easy this will be to get off. That right there is pretty much what I expected. It just pulled off the adapters. So the next impulse here I have is the Impulse Blanche. So let's check out what that has. So the Impulse Blanche doesn't actually use a silhouette pack. This is a striker pack. At least it has the striker pack style attachment. So attaching this on is as simple as a striker pack is, as in you stick it into the normal slot in the middle. Now this is cool. These wings are all white, so they match with the white aesthetic, but they've got that angelic destiny look. This is a cool combo. So now on to anything that has some wizard packs, and first up is the Gunner Zaku Warrior. Once again, we've got a pair of adapters for these particular backpacks. They attach in in the exact same way. Simple, hopefully they won't fall off as easily. Attaching this on is super duper simple. No issues whatsoever. It doesn't feel too tight. And there it is attached, and that looks awesome. So that right there is the Gunner Wizard. Onto the next one. Next up, there it is, side by side with the Slash Zaku Phantom. So when I did pull off the other wizard pack, it did pull off the adapters too. So this time around, I'm just sticking the adapters directly onto the wizard pack. So there is what the Eclipse Gundam looks like with the Slash Wizard attached. So ready to unleash some Gatling hell. On to the next one. At this point, I will mention I do have the other three Zakus from Seed, but I don't have them built. So it's time to move on to some of the kits that nothing is mentioned about aka the other seed kits I have, which have some backpacks. So now from the Zaku to the Jin, here it is, size comparison. The backpack on this has a narrow spaced pair of pegs which do not attach into any of the three different adapters. On the back of the Eclipse, so this is a no-go. Next up there it is side by side with the Master Grade Freedom Gundam 2.0. The Freedom Gundam's backpack does not have the same striker pack adapter even though it is similar in shape. So that does mean it is too thick for the hole, so out of the box it will not fit. Next up is the Master Grade Providence Gundam. Its backpack is a big circular peg unlike anything else, so that does not fit. So next up then is my absolutely beautiful bouquet of Athron Zala suits. So that is the Aegis, the Justice, and the Infinite Justice Master Grade. So these have been attached onto these bases for a long, long time. And as you can see from all the gunk and grime, dead spiders and bugs, they've been there for a long, long time, and there they shall remain. I am not taking these off to try them, so... The answer here is inconclusive, but probably won't fit. If I'm wrong, let me know in the comments. Next up then, we've got the Master Grade Destiny Gundam, and the backpack adapter here is an odd little rectangle, so doesn't fit. Next up there it is side by side with the 1100 Full Mechanics Calamity Gundam, and because the backpack adapter is the same on this as the Freedom Gundam, that means it doesn't fit. So there is one more striker pack in my collection that is buried deep down in the dungeon. This hasn't seen the light of day in years. I actually haven't taken this out of a box since I left Japan. It's been in there that long. That, of course, is the Build Strikes Striker Pack. Now, one of you guys mentioned this to me that you wanted to see this in the video, so I went and dug it out specifically because the color scheme of this pretty much matches the colors that we have right here on the Eclipse Gundam, and this looks absolutely perfect. Matches perfectly. Pretty awesome. So the reason this pack has been buried for years is because my Master Grade Build Strike is built as the Star Build Strike. So while I'm at it and this close to the finish line, why not attach that pack as well? So this does fit onto the back, but the parts that overlap over the Build Strike's shoulders don't really fit over the shoulders of the Eclipse. So this one isn't a 100% compatible pack. So now moving on to the articulation, and a lot of the questions you guys ask me do revolve around the articulation on this kit, or the stability of this kit when it comes to the fact that it is transformable. One of the questions is, can it stand up on those tiny, tiny little feet? And just like we saw with all those striker packs that it was holding onto, this is absolutely no issue whatsoever standing up and supporting some back heavy units. Of course, some of them that are too big, like the perfect strike whole kit and caboodle, that was a bit problematic, but besides that, this kit is a tank so far. As for some problematic aspects, the waist is a little weak when it comes to some heavier backpacks, no big deal. I've always been using this to support it throughout the whole thing so far because glass and mirrors aren't really the most forgiving when it comes to loose-ish joints. So the hips on this do tend to flare out a little bit under some pressure on glass, but only a little bit, not a lot. 
And the only transformation related issue I have is sometimes I try to adjust the foot here and kind of pull the transformation out ever so slightly. But besides that, for transforming kit, this is rock solid. So for the most part with the neck on this, it is mainly just a ball joint up top giving you ball joint like motion. But you can take a little bit of advantage of the fact that this does transform by unlocking the chest, you get this little bit of a tilt up and down in the lower aspect of the neck. At the shoulder now, we don't have the full 360 degree spin, but we've got pretty much close to it. It gets a little bit jammed at one point, but besides that, you've got everything you could need. We also have a pivot forward and back at the shoulder, which gets you a little bit of extra articulation. And there is the arm all the way up, which is pretty good. This is double jointed. That is a joint which brings both the arm and the shoulder up and down and one which is the arm on its own, but is connected underneath the shoulder. The flappy flaps up at the shoulder can move in and out like so to keep out of the way the arm. They've got a little bit of pivot too. I'll mention the back one there it does kind of look more like a hollow part, not as pretty as it could look. And we've got the full 360 spin at the upper arm too. Double jointed elbow bend taken directly from the Freedom 2.0. The wrist here is somewhat double jointed. The first is your standard ball joint wrist. The second is a bit of articulation here at this cuff. Finally, we do have an articulated thumb. I also mentioned that the shoulder setup in here, the arm is not directly connected to the torso, which is very transforming Gundam looking. So be careful with this because it could be fragile. We do have an impressive ab crunch in here. This has a lot of joints going on. And because of that, that does make this a little bit on the weak side out of box. We also have a side to side ab crunch with that as well. And we do not have the full 360 spin at the waist. It's just from here to here. Around back, we've got some nice moving flaps and armor parts. The top part here can move up and down to move it out of the way of striker packs, wizard packs, and silhouette packs. Below that, then we've got this little bit of what looks like a thruster that can pivot in and out, and this flap which covers up said thruster. And just in case I forget it, this little fin on the booty that can move up and down and out like so, but that's probably part of the transformation. Down now to the skirting armor and the front skirtings are double jointed with ball joints and hinges so you can get pretty much everything you'd want out of this and always be able to get it out of the way. Side skirt has a hinge and a pivot so that means it can pivot back and forth like so and move ever so slightly up and down like this. The butt flap can wiggle a little bit but I feel like there's more to this than I know yet. Next up we've got the hips and these are the notorious Freedom Gundam 2.0 hips. Now these are known as a huge break wrist, so be careful. I sanded mine down ever so slightly and widened the hole, and even after doing that, they still fit quite tight and aren't giving me any issues. So out of the box, they are too tight and prone to breaking the hip in there. I had to actually change the hips on my Freedom Gundam 2.0 to metal ones because I broke the ones on the Justice, gave the Freedom's ones to the Justice, and yeah, make sure to narrow this down ever so slightly. File this, or this, or a little bit of both to save you a lot of trouble in future. In here, we do have a bit of a dropping mechanism that drops down a little bit like this. So moving down now to the kicks, there's the kick all the way up to the front. Because of the odd joints in the hips, this does kind of make the leg twist outwards ever so slightly when you raise it. There it is all the way out to the back, so very limited back there. And when it comes to the splits, if you move those side skirts out of the way, that's a decent split. When it comes to the rotation at the upper leg, this is a very stiff joint, so more than likely other joints are going to twist instead of this one. So I popped off the leg, it does spin round, but it is a tight joint, so be careful, it might put some strain on other joints. There's the bend at the knee that is double jointed, very nice, and we do have the lesser spotted splitting upper leg armor when the knee bends. So I'm going to break from tradition a little bit with the articulation at the foot, because this is very unique. We've got a back segment which pivots side to side, moves around like this, the front bit of armor that can pivot without actually getting into the transformation aspects. And as for the foot, you can point the toe down, pivot it side to side, and pivot it back and forward. But at this point, it kind of gets a little mixed up with what is the transformation, and we're going to be saving that till later. So when it comes to the articulation on the Master Grade Eclipse, it is incredibly, incredibly good. There are some limited aspects like the head, it's hard to make it look upwards. The hips are a little bit cluttered with armor and large parts, but besides that, for a transforming kit, this is impressive and has a whole lot of moving bits that you can really eke out a pose with. For example, I say it can't lift its head too much, but you can always try to access that. Never mind. Whoa. Still, quite impressive. So now moving into the accessories, and here is the Master Grade Eclipse Gundam with absolutely everything that it comes with. So that, of course, is the Eclipse Gundam itself. The full stand, including a action base adapter. We've got a pair of beam rifles, a pair of beam sabers with effect parts. Speaking of effect parts, we've got a bunch of effect parts we're using with the shields. The shields themselves, 
The adapters we would have seen earlier on for the different striker packs. We've got an adapter for using in flight form, and finally we've got a bunch of swappable fingers. Some of these came spare on the Freedom Gundam 2.0 runner, so that does mean these hands in this pack are compatible with other seed kits, which is awesome. Anyway, let's check them all out. But before we do that, there are a few runners of leftover Freedom 2.0 parts. A lot of parts. These are mainly just inner frame parts, so no armor or nothing all that juicy. We have the guts of a beam rifle, but besides that, nothing all that spectacular. So first up, as for the weapons, we've got the long-range weapons, which are the beam rifles, the Jinrai. Now, in order to have these as beam rifles, you need to insert the beam sabers into them. Once they're inserted in there, these attach on in the typical seed-style fashion. That is, you attach the handle into those fingers, pop off the fingers that were on there, and put the fingers with the rifles into the hand. Simple as. These look pretty cool. They're all predominantly in white like the mobile suit itself, with some blue and grey up at the business end. Converting these to beam sabers is super simple. You just pull them out of the rifles like so, flip them up, attach on the beam effects, and these look so good. These are not your standard generic beam sabers by any means. Once again, remind me a little bit of the Gundam X, and mildly vigorous. When the rifle sections themselves are not in use, or when they are full rifles, you can attach them onto the side-skirting armors by flipping out a little peg on the side. Now, when these are attached to the side-skirting armors, they also function as scabbards for the beam sabers. So to attach the beam saber in, just take it out of the hand, pop out the blade, and it slides down inside of that like a scabbard do. That is pretty cool. So moving on now, we've got the beam shields. Now, these are so cool. If this kit wasn't cool enough, we've now got some arm-mounted weaponry. So these are shields and offensive weapons. You can just pop them onto the arms like so. If that wasn't cool enough, they can spread open like this, both at the rear and the front. And when you pop off that yellow segment, you can attach on a beam blade in the front, as well as a beam shield section around on the back. And these look so cool. I love arm-mounted weapons. They just make so much sense. And on top of that, these ones look badass. So pointy, so matching with this thing's crazy angular aesthetic. On top of that, then we've got some moving arms to give these some extra articulation. They can move out, back, rotate, they can do a lot. So now moving on to the last aspect of the review, and that of course is the transformation. As usual, this is my first time doing this, just in case I break something. And just to keep it fresh in mind just how difficult or not this particular transformation was. And first up, I'm going to answer this question. Because this is a great question. First off, the transformation of the lower leg is fantastic. You pull out the front segment, push up the foot, and it's seamless. It just works so perfectly. Beautiful. So yeah, you can do just that. You can transform the legs while keeping it in robot mode, which looks way cooler than having those two little feet poking out when it's in the air. This, or should I say these, are some serious looking flying mecha legs. So this right here is definitely not a simple transformation, but at the same time, it's not overly difficult. There's nothing in here that really feels like an Achilles heel, nothing that feels like it's going to break, and nothing that will stop you from getting through it. The first time is definitely a little confusing. When you're working at the hips, I highly recommend that you take off the legs before you transform them. They're inclined to break, and at that, it is hard to rotate what you need to rotate in order to get it right. I spent so long wondering why the legs did not look like they looked in the manual, and that is because you have to drop the hips down entirely with them angled just the right way for it to work. After that, we've got a flipping mechanism. The butt flap unlocks the waist so it can all bend forward. The head can collapse down inside of the body. This can be a little bit difficult to do on your first try. The top of the head spins round, which is very interesting. And a whole lot happens at the arms. They flip out. They separate. There's a locking mechanism in the shoulders that is a little hard to pull on, that you have to pull out because there's nothing really to grab onto. But once you get that sorted, it's not too bad. You slide in the arms, bring them forward. The wings lock into position when you have them flipped up. And finally, you attach those rifles back onto the side skirts once you are done. This is definitely an awesome transformation. Once you've gotten used to it, you should be able to do it seamlessly, no problem. But the first time, it is going to be very, very difficult. So pay a lot of attention to the instructions. So just like when it's in mobile suit mode, in flight form, you can also use the striker packs on it. However, it is a little bit more complex because the wing-ish sections that the arms have transformed into are very bulky. So instead of using every single one of the packs again, I'm just going to use my three favorites. And I will mention I was going to use the Impulse Blanche backpack here, but that can't actually tilt up. So that would be just like a pair of wings on the back 
not lined up with the rest of the wings. You know, perpendicular. It just wouldn't work. But yeah, as for the three that I used, that was the Ale Striker looking pack that comes with the Blue Frame D, the Noir Striker pack, and the Build Striker pack. All look fantastic with this, especially the Build Strike pack. But anyway, I guess it's time to uh, summarize. So yeah, that right there is it for the review, and there's no real way to say this except for the way I'm about to say it. This kit is Gundarium tier and my new favorite Master Grade. It is that good. It has blown my mind apart. So I just made a my top five favorite and least favorite Master Grade videos not that long ago. Well, this has displaced them all and is now at number one. This is the full package right here. Aesthetically, it is phenomenal. This is a really beautiful looking Gundam. It's over the top design wise, which is very nice, but it has a subtle, classy color scheme. It's just, even in your hand, I don't know how to say it. It's phenomenal to look at. The pictures have not done it justice. When it comes to the articulation, besides the ends of the legs, you'd never even realize that this is a transforming mobile suit, especially one that has quite a over-the-top and complex transformation. So the articulation is incredibly good, the balance is great, and it looks fantastic in every pose you put it in. As for the accessories, it is just the standard loadout of beam rifle, beam saber, and shield, but they've all been given such cool gimmicks. They all look great, the clear effect parts look fantastic, and they're all unique in their own way. The ability then to use striker packs, pretty much any striker pack that is out there, wizard pack and silhouette pack, is crazy. I actually wish Bandai would do something like this particular kit with other lines. Imagine a Gundam Wing Eclipse style suit. A really over the top new design for Wing that can use all of their accessories. It would be awesome. Of course, it'd be next to impossible to do something like that for UC and maybe some other universes, but it's just cool. This feels like it was designed to be a model kit to work with other model kits. I love it. And the transformation, even though it is quite complex, once you get used to it, it's very seamless, it's very nice, nothing is awkward or hard to do, and it just works. When it's finished, it looks phenomenal and can still use all of those packs. This is great. If you can get one, get one. You will love it. Anyway, as always, thank you so, so much for watching. Make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews. Remember to drop that comment down there in the comments if you want to be entered into the Barbie giveaway. And as always, make sure to come back for more Gunpla reviews, and I'll see you next time. As always, this video right here would not have been possible without each and every one of you guys who watches my videos, including those of you who help out on the channel memberships and over on Patreon, including Craig Jerry, Van Fon, Sean T, Mr. Winter, Lauren C. Hack, Joseph Kuglock, Global Frequency Studios, Forseti, Caleb Engelhart, and Bakito Official.